good day to all. Today, we're going to discuss about sustainability accounting, which is the first ever presentation for our course, Strategic and Sustainability Audit. Please take note that this is just one of the examples of the presentations for sustainability audit, as well as the strategic audit first, strategic and sustainability audit to be more specific about our course. So expect that there will be discussions about this one as we go along the way, especially with the standards that we are going to tackle here, which will be introduced just shortly. So the first part here would be the saying by Albert Einstein. So allow me to share to you about this one, which says that the world we have created today as a result of our thinking thus far has problems which cannot be solved by thinking the way we thought when we created them. So our problems actually that we created based on our inventions or thinkings or the actions or the actions that we've done from the past actually have changed or developed along the way together with the changes with our landscape, environment and all. That's why we have to do the paradigm shift so as to solve them in the current times or situations. What happened before may not be relevant today and what is relevant today may not be relevant in the near future. Now, we might ask the question, what is sustainability? It means intergenerational, economic, environmental, and social equity. We have to dissect the terms intergenerational, meaning to say that there are different generations that for who will be experiencing the impact of the term sustainability with the three pronged factors, economic, which talks about profit, environmental, which talks about the planet, and social, which talks about the people. So these are the three pieces that we have to take note, which coincides with the three major factors about sustainability. And equity is here because we want that the public and everybody as much as possible will be able to enjoy the things that will be brought by this. Then there can be as many definitions about sustainability accounting, but we can just focus about this one. We have to take note that sustainability accounting actually has a lot of synonyms and these terms may be familiar to you and me. One is social accounting, it talks about people. In addition to that, it can be plus environmental. That's why social and environmental. Then we can be very specific with the corporation's responsibility to the general public. Hence, we have corporate social reporting. And with a separate course about good governance and social responsibility, we can also be, again, be specific to corporations, corporate social responsibility or CSR reporting. And because sustainability accounting is that particular area, which is the extension of financial accounting and reporting, which would be focusing on the non-financial items, which would actually play a very important role with our reporting. So that's why we have non-financial reporting. Then sustainability accounting also focuses on the disclosure of non-financial information. As explained a while ago, about a firm's performance to external stakeholders. So whatever report, the so-called sustainability report that we are going to make will be communicated to a lot of stakeholders, externally speaking. We have the capital holders, the creditors, and other authorities to speak of or about. Then this represents the activities that have a direct impact on the three confluences or factors again, society, environment, and economic people, planet, and profit, the three Ps. And based on the performances of the organization or organizations, also with the three factors. Now, as an example, we can have external financial reporting. Again, sustainability accounting reports will be focused on providing non-financial information and matters about the business and organization to external stakeholders or those people who are from outside of the organization but have stakes or have interests 
about the happenings or the phenomena of the business. Now, one area could be environmental liabilities. Depending on the organization's industry and business operations, it is possible that it can have liabilities, especially to environment. So let's say chemicals being handled, which is actually the start of sustainability reporting way back in the 80s and 70s to 80s, then the issue here, it's possible that there would be provisions in our discussions of accounting we're in, we're going to recognize certain liabilities because we have already known that such have complied with our liability recognition principles, which is of course composed of two areas that it is probable that there would be an economic outflow involving the liabilities. And second, that the amount can be measured reliably. It's just that for provisions, the amount is still estimated or an estimate. So that's why we have to report about that. Like there are already people who are actually detrimental in terms of the situation because of certain chemicals being exhumed or spilled by the organization to land and water which contaminated the area. So something like that experience. As an example, we can go to the experience of continuum of events at Purity Oil Superfund site that lead to Chevron's reporting of a liability. Well, again, as what I've said, chemicals could be spilled, oil could be spilled, and that can result to harm to the general public or the community in general. So that's why liabilities can be reported. And that's the point of why we focus about the sustainability reporting since it will also cater environmental factors. Now, sustainable business practices are very important. For example, about recording and reporting of goodwill, we just have to take note that I under IFRS three business combinations, the organization will have to record goodwill if it acquires another business. So that's the requirement. One learning area that we can take note here is that sometimes accountants will just be reporting transactions that, of course, can be quantified because we cannot record a journal entry if we cannot measure that amount or that economic resource with the terms of its amount or its amount rather properly. So that's the situation. However, there could be some areas or factors or information that are very relevant to the situation. However, because they cannot be quantified yet, that's why accountants do not include them. They can't count them yet. So sooner or later, they will perhaps affect the financial statements because they will result to journal entries. But for now, they can be disclosed in the notes to financial statements. About sustainability reporting, here are some issues. So we can compare that to financial reporting in that sustainability reporting is again focused on the non-financial items or matters and financial reporting is on the financial items. We also have to take note that GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, which we will discuss in terms of the standards in the future, have voluntary guidelines. So that's one thing that we should take. This is voluntary in nature. Then how do we define the scope? It's possible that there could be a lot of areas to think about depending on the organization. Hence, we can look at the standards. But this is one area that we can, of course, think about as to why. Then where is the organization heading? Like in the next five years, where is the company going to end? What's the impact of sustainability reporting about that? Although we have known that it's going to impact because it is prospective and it's going to be futuristic in nature. It's going to think about the strategic nature or long-term nature of the actions and operations of the business. Now, will we include the parts of sustainability reporting in required external reporting? Usually it's a no. However, when sustainability is part of the strategic plan of the organization, like it's part of the core operations and concepts of the business, that's why we will include that in our report, especially with the information about the entity. Then one area that we can look into about the example is the corporate sustainability reports 
for example, or that is FedEx and Kinko's. So these companies have flown or they fly under the radar in which they were subject to close scrutiny and monitoring of certain regulatory agencies. And they obtain, or this involves obtaining upper management support because sustainability reporting will be published and issued and signed and approved by those people at the top, especially the board of directors. Then one area also is about external reporting of greenhouse gases, especially for those organizations who are into manufacturing. So we can actually associate discussions about ecology, about environment, about environmental sciences with this. So we just have to take note that because of climate change and all, we should be, of course, incorporating in our operations the impact of usage of chemicals, usage of a lot of paper in our operations. And by, for example, doing the so-called paperless technology or minimal usage of paper, then we can help our Mother Earth to have lesser consumption of the trees used as raw materials for paper and also with the manufacturing in terms of the carbon emissions. So we can, of course, do the external reporting about this one. Unfortunately, not all corporations and organizations are into this, but if we're talking about big corporations, it's possible that this would be an issue. So greenhouse gases accounting and reporting standard, we have inventory, we have to set the target and reduce the emission of these gases. So boundaries could be organizational in terms of where the location of the business is and the operation. Then we can go to the Stanford primer about this one about greenhouse gases. If we can add content here. Then another one is about sustainability reporting assurance. Issue is who is requiring assurance? So I said a while ago, it's not a requirement. So the reason that there is leeway for organizations, but if incorporated in the reporting, this is something that could really help the stakeholders about the business. And then when would the organization really be in the future and would last in its area and industry? The assurance will be of the report, the underlying management systems and governance. So if we can have like internal audits also to be done, so we can look into this particular aspect. Although the sustainability audits can also be done by external auditors or auditors from certain accounting firms or auditing firms outside of the organization or business. Then we also have the balance scorecard basics. This is a review where in, in balance scorecard by Capelan and Norton. So take note that the two are the proponents of this one. It would, aside from dealing with the quantitative and financial performances and indicators or areas or metrics or key performance indicators as we speak of our KPIs, it would also capture the qualitative ones. We can look into that particular balance scorecard composed of four quadrants. So it's like a square composed of four quadrants or sections. Then this can be used as an internal assessment and reporting strategy as well as this would tie to corporate metrics. So overall level, corporate level to the specific strategies that would be anchored towards long-term perspectives. And the four perspectives here, which are of course for long-term are learning or growth, opportunities to grow as an organization, the business processes or the internal operating processes, customers and the users of the products or the end users and the financial aspects. Then this can also be expanded to become the sustainable balanced scorecard. So this is going to focus on long-term perspectives. Then 
talking about costing issues in terms of management accounting, which is very close to sustainability accounting, we can also look into the issue about financing and costing a cleanup site, which is the site engaged with cleaning the waste and all the spills, the spillages of certain chemicals or byproducts into certain critical areas. Question would be which generation should pay for the cleanup? Is it the past, the current, future, or some combination? This is very tricky about this one. So this could be one item that we can discover in the future. Then one resource that we can look into is the landfill in Chesterfield Municipal. And then the outcome was that municipal bonds and service rate increased. So just to be able to sustain and pay for the cleanup costs. So there is already a sort of local mandate or law or ordinance wherein the service rates will have to be increased because a portion of that will go to the cleanup. So this is a good strategy actually. Then sustainable management accounting. We also have issues, proper allocation of environmental costs to products for product introduction. So the first part of the product as introduced to the market retention or maintaining that and when we eliminate them, that's why in costing in environmental accounting actually, which is a discussion that we can have in the future, this will include the incorporation of environmental costs to the costing of our products. And then current costs can be past and future. And if we say future costs, they are from retroactive regulation. So meaning to say the regulation will have an impact as if it was there from the very beginning. So the cost would of course be carried forward from past to present and future. Then we can also go to other cases for that. Now, another one is about socially responsible investing wherein the issues could be financial performance and social or sustainable ethical, et cetera, performance. So what are we going to do about the two so that they would be balanced and they would overlap and the center or the overlapping area would be something that is the core or what we should look into. Then many vehicles are available about this, wherein it's going to be an investment in an enterprise, which is the so-called social enterprise, because there is an overlapping, again, part of being capitalistic nature of business, plus a socially oriented enterprise or socially conscious enterprise. Then competitive with non-SRI, or of course, not with the socially responsible investing. So, is it competitive with non-socially responsible investing? The screening methods, how do we evaluate which is socially responsible? And then socially responsible firm is a signal of good management, of course. If we think of the long term, we should always be thinking about the three areas, social, economic, and environmental. We think of what is ethical, what is good for the organization, because we're thinking of the long run. That's what sustainability is about, not just to survive in the current times. Then a lot of resources also can be looked into about this. Now, market mechanisms is also one area about how do we employ certain ways and acts and adjust about what's going to happen or what was happening or what is going to happen in the market. The issue here is like regulatory response evaluation to Clean Air Act amendments which originated from the acid rain problem or sulfuric oxide. That's the meaning of this one or dioxide. Yeah. So there's already a response in a form of regulation about that. So this is a good, of course, amendment because this would help about the evaluation of this. And then what can result here is in addition to that, the concern here is how is this going to be implemented and how serious implementers are in terms of really doing this. Like for this one, emerging area is in CO2 greenhouse gas trading. 
this particular area, for example, here is really engaged with releasing the greenhouse gases. And are they actually being regulated? Are they being informed and like being told, especially the management that what they are going to do would result to these effects and would be harmful and are they to be penalized accordingly? That is one area that we can really look into. Our resource is about the acid rain case. And then these are the things that we can look into like the quantitative and PV analysis or net present value. We will look into the present value of the cash inflows less the cost of the investment. And for the cost, we incorporate also the cost for environmental accounting. So with that, we can see if really the project would be contributing positively to the profitability and sustainability of the business. Then also we look into the changes on the permit prices, fuel prices, et cetera. And we can do the so-called sensitivity analysis for one change or factor or multiple the scenario analysis. And also we look into the qualitative considerations or other items which are not financial, but which should be very important because they have bearing to our decision making. Then next is environmental accounting as we talked about that a while ago, issues would be from financial accounting, finance, of course, as explained, MA done, legal, ethical, and public relations about the law, about our ethics, which of course are tackled exhaustively in other courses, and the public relations, because these environmental factors will have impact about the sustainability of the business, especially if there are things that are already in violation of the law and ethics. So they could have impact in the future in cases that there would be problems and the public would like file a case about or against that particular situation negatively with the entity or with the public versus the corporation. Then we can look into the motive paint incorporated about very good producer of environmentally friendly things. So this is one area that the organization is doing good. The national income is also being accounted for. Example, for national government level accounting, we adjust national income accounting to include the use of the specific factors coming from the environment. So that's why national income, environmental accounting, renewable, non-renewable resources, and the impact, of course, of that to the national income because of the environmental degradation. Then we also have to look into the genuine progress indicator as an alternative to gross domestic product or GDP in economics. And this is a measure of well-being. And we can compare this with the countries, the so-called G countries, in which they're actually having genuine progress or progresses in terms of incorporating environmental costs and accounting to their national income and progress. Then we have to take note that any investment about the environment, about the planet as a whole, would of course be having an impact if we cannot see that in the short term, but in the long term or long run, because this would complement to the financial bottom line. So the profit or loss will maybe be lower at the onset or at the start, but later on, we can see that if we compare that without the environmental accounting and sustainability accounting being incorporated, then we can see that this would have an impact there. So that's the point of the sustainability accounting acting as a supplement or complement or an additional item to the profit or loss, financially speaking. Then this is completed on the same investment as financial ROI. So return on investment in management accounting, remember, is completed as net income or profit divided by the investment. This is also true. Social returns, like computed financially speaking, divided by our investment, socially speaking. An example of that or of the case is distributed generation technologies wherein we actually incorporate the impact of certain technologies to different levels or different generations available. 
also we can look into the echo efficiency. So this is about the environment or the environment and ecology. So method to provide information on environmental performance vis-a-vis -vis or as a complement to financial performance. This is normalized by net value added by the firm. So remember in business perspectives and operations, anything that we do here, anything that we do there should add a value, if not financial, even non-financial, or simply quantitative, if not financially speaking, in pesos or dollars to the firm. And these are the guideline areas about the water use, energy use, global warming contribution, ozone depleting substances and waste, especially again, those who are into manufacturing businesses or areas or industry and those engaged with chemicals. So as an example, it could be about an industry into chemicals. Now, allow me to end this discussion or this particular presentation about this saying by John F. Kennedy, which states that some people see the world as it is and ask why. So why is the world like this? Why is the world being like this or treats us like this? But according to him, I see the world as it can be and ask why not? That's why John F. Kennedy is prospective. He is looking into opportunities. He is looking into improvements. Which parts can I improve myself with? Which parts that I can invest into, I can invest with so that in the long run, this would improve me as well. Thank you very much, by the way, for listening. Hopefully you learned something from this session. God bless us all.